Welcome back to the part 2 of imports. In the last video, I showed you some basic things you can do with your imports. Today, I want to show you more. But in case you haven't watched the previous one, I would say have a look at that one first and then come back to this video. I will add the link in the description. Okay, so I did show you two Excel files at the start of the previous video. And we have worked with the first file up till now. First, let's take a look at the other file again. And let's talk about how we are going to import it. Also, I have added another column for the items, so it will represent the order item. And here you can see that I have two sheets inside this Excel file, each for a user. And inside each sheet, we have orders for that specific user. Okay, so now how can we import this type of file? So we can see that we have the header row as well, and we have multiple sheets. For this, first we need to implement with multiple sheets concern. And then all we need to do is define a sheets method. So for this, I'm going to first create a new import file called user order imports. And then we will add the sheets concern and the method inside that file. So I'm going to just run the command PHPR is make import to create an Excel file for our imports. And I'm going to name it user orders import. Now inside our code, we need to go to this file. And instead of collection, I'm just going to implement with multiple sheets. And here I'm going to define a method called sheets. Now inside this method, we will just return an array which will contain instances of our sheets inside the Excel file. Right now we don't have the Excel file for representing a sheet. So we need to create that one. Now the basic idea is if we have different formats in each of the sheet, then we would be creating multiple sheet imports or multiple Excel files for each of the format. But in our case, both the sheets have the same format of data. So we just need to create only one file. So let's create that one. I will go back to my terminal and run the same command. And this time I'm going to name my file as orders import. So here inside the array, I'm going to return orders import. And that's all. So now inside our orders import file, the first thing I'm going to change is to change the two collection to two model actually because we will be creating an order instance here. And now inside, the first thing we need to do is to get the sheet name because that represents our users inside the database. And we will add this record against those specific users. So in order to get the sheet name, we will be registering a before sheet even and then get the sheet name. So now we are going to check if there is any user for this name and then add the orders data. Otherwise, we are going to skip the data and move to the next sheet. So let me explain what I'm doing here. First, I'm looking for this specific user. The sheet name is representing a single user. So we are looking for that user data inside our database. If there is no user for such name, then we are going to skip this row. Next, what I'm doing here is I'm just creating a new order and associating the user with it. In the last, what I'm doing here is I'm just adding the order items for each of the order. So now we have everything in place. Let's go to our controller. And instead of this, I'm just going to comment this one out and add this line here. So the name of the file is users import two. And instead of user import, I'm going to be using orders import file. Now, the last thing we need to do is go into our orders import and use the trade importables. So we have everything in place. Now let's go to the browser and try it out. So we didn't get any error. Now we will go to our database and see the result. So we can see that there are data that have been inserted into our database. I did run this import earlier. So that's why I have more data than we have in the Excel file. We can also go to our order items and see that each of the order items has been added as well. Now that was about multiple sheets and how to import them. But now I want to talk about a problem that you may face while importing. And that is about the insertion queries that will be executed. So from what we have right now, if we are importing this way, we are executing a query for each of the row. Now you can imagine if we have a bigger data in here, let's say even 20,000, then we are executing 20,000 queries. And as a result, we may face bottleneck. So what we can do to prevent that is by inserting the data as a batch. And we can easily do that by implementing a concern called with batch inserts. We will have to define the method batch size as well that will return the size of the batch. 
and this way we are reducing a lot of queries execution. So for this, we need to go into our orders import where we are implementing two model concern and have the model method. We just need to add another concern here with batch inserts. And we also need to define the method batch size, which is going to be an integer. And we can specify the number of rows that needs to be inserted at a time. So let's say we can say 5,000 or even 50 for now. The only thing that you should be aware of is that this concern only works if we are implementing the two model as well. So if we are not using the two model, then this won't work. Now that we are talking about optimizations, another problem we can face with the large import file is the memory usage. We can implement a concern for that as well with chunk reading and implement a method named chunk size. So what we need to do is add with chunk reading and we need to define the method chunk size. So we can define the size of this chunk and we can use this chunk size along with the batch size in order to import efficiently. One last small thing I want to talk about is the progress bar. So let's say instead of the route, we are importing via the command line. And we want to show the progress of the import on the terminal. Laravel Excel provide us another concern called with progress bar. And with this implemented inside the command, we just need to use the with output method and it will show the progress in the terminal. This also brings us to the end of the video and this Laravel series as well. I hope it was helpful and you learned at least something from here. In case you find it helpful, please like the video and share with the others so they can also get benefit from this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.